BJC is deliberating today on its preferred candidate for the position of Chief Justice after a week of interviews. The Constitutional Court Justice Mbuiseli Madanga was the first one to appear before the JSC on Tuesday. He was followed by Supreme Court of Appeal Justice Mandis. Apologies, Mandisa Maya, then Judge President Dustin Mlambo and Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. But last night's session ended in chaos when the EFF and Justice Minister Ronald Lamuda shouted at each other. Now, ENCA reporter Heidi Jockers has been following that story and joins us live. Good afternoon again, Heidi. It seems we have some sort of developments around the blue light skirmish from yesterday. The Ministry of Justice has issued a statement, if I'm correct. Yes, indeed, Mfundo, the Minister of Justice has uh, released a statement, and I think it was um, necessary to provide some kind of clarity given the fact that the um, EFF released a statement this morning um, making some serious allegations about the judiciary. But we are joined by um, uh, the Minister of Justice spokesperson, Kristen Peary. Thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Um, I want to go into the part of the statement that says to suggest that the process as prescribed by the Constitution is judicial capture or manipulation is disingenuous at, at best. I want us to speak about what actually happened yesterday because you had two commissioners, the Minister of Justice together with Commissioner Julius Malema shouting at each other, the one calling another a liar uh, and there seems to be confusion as to what exactly happened at the appointment of acting uh, of um, JP uh, Dunstan Mlambo as acting constitutional court judge. Just try and explain to us what, what actually is going on. All right. So what, what's important in this is the actual timeline of when the appointments actually did take place. There was an insinuation during the commission that um, the appointment of J.P. Mlambo was designed to make him more appointable um, as Chief Justice. Um, and the facts are actually quite the opposite. Um, firstly, the vacancy occurred sometime in April, and we were notified as such by um, the Office of the Chief Justice. And subsequently, there to then the minister then initiated the process of obtaining concurrence, as is required in the Constitution with the Chief Justice on who he can recommend, this, he being the minister, who he can recommend to the president for appointment. So essentially that was it, but um, what we saw yesterday was at best uh, opportunism and like you say in the statement, a complete distortion of what the law actually requires of the minister when appointing an acting appointment where there's a vacancy in the constitutional court. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to clarify, there was an insinuation and a constant uh, question that was asked as to why um, uh, J.P. Dunstan Mlambo's name was preferred to act on the constitutional court bench uh, as an acting concord judge. But the, the issue is the constitution clearly says what can and cannot happen and how the president and the executive of the Department of Justice, which is uh, the minister, uh, the, the minister and the president have a conversation about this. So. And the Chief Justice. Uh, and the Chief Justice, exactly. So your, your, your statement elaborates that in detail, and maybe for clarity for viewers' sake, for them to understand that the Constitution makes provisions for this, and it clearly says what can and cannot happen in appointing acting constitutional court judges. Not only acting appoint, uh, constitutional court judges, but as well as acting judges in superior courts. This is your high court or any court that has a status similar to that of a high court. The minister, in that instance, um, appoints after consultation with the head of a court. But in the instance of a constitutional court, the minister makes a recommendation to the president after concurring with the chief justice. And so in this instance, the minister inquired as to why he believed that um, J.P. Mlambo, like other J.P.s at the time, had not been given an opportunity because what we had noticed was it seemed as though it was a trend to, to allow J.P.s to act, but in our records it seemed as though this particular J.P. had not been provided an opportunity to act. So the minister simply inquired with the acting chief justice as to whether there was any specific reason around this. And the acting chief justice actually did clarify that at some point uh, the J.P. was approached um, and may have not been able to confirm his attendance um, in that regard. And so that was also clarified on the record. But most importantly, Heidi, as well, um, you would have seen that the minister did not hesitate to make these records uh, part of the record 
part of this correspondence was made part of the record and was immediately shared with all commissioners. So it's there in black and white, the timeline and exactly what the law provides was made plain with the commissioners. So it's not something that was out of the ordinary um, that the ministry sought to hide, um, as is insinuated by various statements in various quarters, that there is some sort of conspiracy. On the contrary, everything was laid bare for everyone to see in the commission. So mm. it's not something nefarious at all. Yeah, and it's interesting that uh, time frames weren't um, elaborated on after those letters were given. But, um, Crispin, I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm not sure if you're going to be willing to answer this, but um, JPM Lumber was subjected to sexual harassment rumor questions, and there have been calls for uh, that, to, that interview to actually be redone, even though they have been expunged from the record. Um, Many would say that there had been concerted efforts from uh, some commissioners here at uh, the Judicial Service Commission for the interview process for Chief Justice to kind of discredit um, JPM Lumbo. And many are trying to understand, but why? And uh, is this truly a fair process to uh, throw rumors at a candidate for Chief Justice without proper evidence and in a way discredit him? Because now everyone's only talking about the sexual harassment rumor, rumor questions. Well, I think I can't speak for the JSC as to how they will be handling this matter. Um, but all of this is in the public domain, and, and people are at liberty to comment on the processes of the JSC, as has always been the case. Um, historically, JSC interviews have garnered great debate in society, and this one is clearly no exception. But I think the JSC can best respond as to how they're going to deal with um, whatever has been said has been written about this process, and if there are any legal matters that arise out of it, the JSC will pronounce itself right. on how it processes that. I knew you wouldn't answer, but I had to try. Thank you so much. We do appreciate your time. That's uh, Kristen Perry, who speaks for uh, the Minister of Justice, Ronald Lamola. And I think it was necessary um, clarity in Fundo with regards to what the Constitution says, with regards to who can act on the Constitutional Court, uh, but also in terms of other Supreme Courts um, who can act as uh, judges. It's a norm, uh, but of course there were issues around the legality of names being provided to um, the Minister as well as to the president but as you rightfully hear um, the Minister of Justice the Ministry of Justice explaining it in full detail as to what the Constitution says with regards to that process mm -hmm. I must say it was important that they promptly respond to that because it was going to further polarize this whole conversation around these interviews but thank you very much that's ENCA reporter Heidi Jockos just giving us the latest following that uh, statement released by the Ministry of Justice pertaining to Dustin Lambo's appointment as acting justice in the Constitutional Court. Now